In this video I'm going to go through how to use interrupts with ESP8266. As part of my demonstration I'm using a Wemos with a NeoPixel and I'm going to be using the onboard LED. I'm using D4 connected to the data input of the NeoPixel. The aim of the demonstration is to show that you can do two things at once, uh, apparently at once, with the, uh, with the interrupt routines. So to begin with I thought I'd go through just the interrupt concepts. On the left hand side the violet area denotes the main program running instruction by instruction continually looping around. Let's call that the foreground. And when an interrupt event happens it, it's the program flow is directed to an interrupt handling routine and the triggers could be a pin going low or a pin going high or a timer timing out counting down to zero or counting up to a particular value. Note that you can have more than one interrupt program so you could have multiple interrupt handling routines to handle uh, different events. In terms of CPU usage in a way you can't get something for nothing so if you're spending 20% of your time in an interrupt loop you only have 80% of the CPU time available for the main loop and all the combinations therein. But it wouldn't be unusual to for a lot of communication systems that I've seen to spend most of their time in the interrupt handling routine receiving characters or data from another system. And that would be quite quite normal. It's a very efficient programming technique using interrupts. So to begin with I've programmed the um, the blink routine but for interrupt use. Note that at the top it's just defining the LED, defining a time which is in seconds and my delay I set to one second because you have to divide it by two in my example. Um, a variable for toggling the LED and then define the interrupt routine which I've called interrupt handler and that toggles the LED resets the timer so when it arrives at the interrupt routine the timer is timed out that resets it and then in the setup is defining all of the necessary timer definitions and setting setups and then actually enabling the interrupts note in the main loop there's no no work going on there's nothing in the foreground task if you like to call it that so here's the example running flashing the LED on and off once per second. So that's the interrupt routine flashing that LED. Next I've gone for a much more complex demonstration this time driving a NeoPixel ring which is quite very difficult to to drive timing wise and also decoding weather meters. So there it is running that's a red, green, blue, white LED being switched on and circulated around the ring whilst the foreground task is decoding the weather metars. And those two programs are completely independent of each other, albeit the interrupt routine is every second. So that's how I've done the interrupt routine. Switch all the LEDs off, increment a counter by four, and then set red, green, blue, white pixels, pixel.show, it actually displays the pixels and then the timer resets the timer and it returns from the interrupt back to the main routine. So that's a very quick look through interrupts, a very powerful programming technique and simplifies a lot of real-time or interaction with the real-world 